Did you ever have a dehydrating project go wrong, but you don't want to throw those vegetables away? Or do you want to take your vegetables to the next level and learn how to make them more useful for everything that you cook? Let's give some vegetable powder a try. That's what we're doing next on The Purposeful Pantry. Okay, I'm gonna show you a quick way how I do powders. This is vegetable powder that I'm gonna make. It is just a generic dehydrated vegetable blend um, that I do. It's like the mixed bag that you can get from the grocery store in the freezer section. And then I had regular carrots and I mixed them. I was almost out of regular vegetables, so I just kind of mixed them all. And we're gonna make a vegetable powder from this. I'm using a Ninja Nutri-Blender, um, Nutri-Bullet. It's what it's called. it's called. It's the 900 watt machine. You can use a blender, a high speed blender works best, but you can use a bullet blender. They're great. You can use your coffee grinder that you have dedicated for power powders, but you have to do them in smaller amounts. Um, but I love this blender because it's a lot more versatile for me and it also is more powerful than my regular coffee grinder was. Um, so we are going to take our cup and these are fully dehydrated, fully conditioned, ready to go um, vegetables that I have already dehydrated. So I'm going to put them in my jar and I'm not going to do the entire batch at one time because I want to leave a little space for the vegetables to move. I'm going to take my blender top, screw it in. All right, so instead of just holding this down and grinding it like crazy, like you might a blender, we're gonna pulse this because we don't wanna wear out the machine's motor, although it's not gonna wear out easily, but it can get overheated. But it also allows this to come to rest and then be processed again, instead of it just being sent straight up to the top and then run where it never gets a chance to come back down into the blades. So pulsing is best in the beginning. Here we go, it's gonna be a little loud. is vegetable powder. Now you'll see that there are a few bits here at the very top, um, right there at the top, that still need a little more grinding, but that's just the very top. The rest of it is a pretty fine powder. And what I'm gonna do is pour most of this into my glass jar that I'm gonna be storing in. And I'm gonna keep the last little bit here just to help kind of prime the last. Here we go again. And there we go. Okay, now here's your choice. Um, I could grind this one more time and get it really fine, but I don't care because even these little bits of carrots here are so fine that once they get into any kind of dish I made, they're going to rehydrate so quickly that you're not going to be able to taste them. Um, but this is, um, I'm fine with this mix. You may want to do it again to get an even finer powder because you can see how it's finer down here and then the bits have kind of settled at the top. Do it again if you'd like. In fact, I'll just show you. Because for this, things aren't quite so fussy as you might want to get with green powder. Because green powder might be, um, if you don't have it fully ground down, getting bits of stems or something into a dish that you weren't expecting them to be in can be a little off-putting. But for this, you're going into mostly dishes like casserole soups. Um, I put them in pancakes. I put them in waffles. Um, I do a lot of stuff with this. So um, it's usually never noticeable. So I don't have as big of a problem making it like a super fine powder. But let's go. All right, that's much finer. I mean, you can even tell where it's kind of caking along the side of the jar. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is um, show you how you can then take this and put it back in your dehydrator. Yes, yes you can. Um, because heat can generate um, moisture and we don't want to put this right into a storage jar without making sure it's fully dry. So we're gonna put this onto a tray to allow it to dry one more time for about an hour 
at the most, and then we're going to go ahead and store it when it's ready. So what I'm showing you is the dehydrator dehydrating tray that you can make if you have fruit leather trays. You can also do this, do this with parchment paper. All I've done is taken the corners, you can see here, folded them over to create a pocket. You can see that. And then I take a paper clip and just connect it. So now we've got a tray. This can go in just like this into my dehydrator as long as I've turned it off when I start. And look, I can make little animals in. <laughs> Sorry. I'm a dork. You should know that by now. Um, you can, um, what was I saying? You can put this straight into the dehydrator without putting a top on it at all as long as you have your dehydrator off when you put it in and you turn it off and let the fan come to a full and complete stop before you pull it out. Okay, I wanted you to see how this works. Turning off my machine. Give it a count of five to make sure that the fan has stopped moving. And there is the powder, exactly like it was when it went in. It did not blow away. It didn't get thrown all over the machine. This is it. So this is still warm just from the heat of the dehydrator. So what we're gonna do now is just let it sit for a few minutes to cool off before we do anything else with it. And then it's gonna go right into storage. So what I have is a canning jar that's clean, my funnel. Move this out of the way and get closer. And I'm gonna take my tray and just fold it a little bit and tip it into my jar and I hope the jar is big enough. This has had plenty of time to cool off without picking up any moisture from the atmosphere. Sorry about the noise. And there we go. We have vegetable powder. So the next thing it's going to be is I am going to get ready to store it. I would put my food saver attachment on. I'm taking my uh, food, handheld food saver vacuum sealer. I'm gonna put it on and run it until I've heard the pitch change stay constant for just a few moments. It'll take a minute. All right, so it's ready to go. Now, if on a normal day I had a much fuller jar, what I would do is place a muffin cup paper inside the jar over the powder to stop the powder from coming up into, uh, taking any chance for it to come out through a lid and get up into, through the food attachment into my machine because I don't want this to get clogged with powder but because I know I'm not full that's not going to happen it's also not necessary to vacuum seal your powders if you're using them constantly you can just throw a moisture absorber in uh, if that makes you feel more comfortable about any moisture that's in your home that when you open it and you use it and you close the lid back up you might want to throw a moisture absorber in let me see if I even have one handy this is a moisture absorber it's kind of like the stuff that you find in your box of shoes but that you can throw on the inside and just seal the jar up and you're good to go you don't need to use a vacuum sealer and normally I don't use one when I'm doing the powders I just wanted you to see the process of going through it um, the last thing that you do is mark your jar always mark your jars no matter if you think you're gonna remember what it is or not because sometimes they they get to look the same um, and it's let's see it's 220 that's good enough for me and there you go dehydrated vegetable powder. Now to use this, put a tablespoon or two into any casserole that you're making, into any soup that you're making. I put about probably half a tablespoon into brownies and into my pancake mixes and into to waffles. Um, I will put it as a sprinkle on top of a salad. I will do it um, as just another seasoning to go into anything that I bake, uh, make, sorry, cook. Uh, casseroles, tacos, um, anything. This can go in anything. Just add a little extra nutri nutrition. A cup. So I hope you'll give this a try. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I'll link to the articles that you need in the videos for creating your own trays and how to dehydrate vegetables. A really fast beginning dehydrating project to do frozen vegetables right into your dehydrator. Thanks for watching. I've got another project right here for you to see and I hope that you'll come and join us again.